You know what's worse than a market crash? A reverse market crash, a concept I've been talking about on the podcast. So what is a reverse market crash? That's when all of a sudden the market just balloons up. And you're like, wait a minute, what happened? Are you trying to hold it? And you see the rich get rich and the poor get poor. Now you may say, Pat, how is that even possible? I want you to look at this chart from Pew Research. Everybody that's a politician that becomes a governor or Congress or Senate, they all want to claim, we got to help the middle class. We got to help middle income. But look what this data is telling us from Pew Research. According to this data, if you look at the green at the top, that's upper income aggregate wealth in the U.S. Yellow is middle America, middle income, and the light green is lower income. To the left, the wealth in America, only 60% of it was with upper income back in 1983, 32 was with middle, and 7 was with lower. Fast forward to 2016, it's even worse today. It went from 60% of the wealth to 79%. Middle income went from 32% of the wealth down to 17. That's a drop of nearly 50%. And lower income went from 7% to 4. That's a drop off of 40 percent so you may be asking where are we going with this this is the point every time we're printing money to assume and say these politicians we're helping the low and middle income family you give them money guess what they don't know how to do they don't know how to save they're experts at spending the government doesn't teach them how to save they just give them the money and they know they're going to spend it. and then when they spend it what do they buy they buy a product somebody owes them they owe this they buy a camera they buy a drink it goes to the companies so you give the money to the poor knowing the money is really not being given to the poor it's going to flow to the top, which is who the rich. That's how the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor. And these policies are not going to stop. By the way, the other day, Jerome Powell says he's not raising the rates. You know what happened to the S&P 500? Boom, 5% within a week. So what if all of a sudden Powell in the next few months, they were lowering the rates, were lowering the rates. You could see S&P and Dow just go boom, 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 which is called a reverse market crash. Something the wealthy would want, not something you would want for low and middle America. We're going to talk about that today. Okay, so if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. I'm going to give you a few examples of what a reverse market crash could look like. Case studies, actual reality, what happened. One is Germany, one is Zimbabwe, one is Iran, one is Argentina, one is Turkey, and maybe a couple other ones. But let's start off with Germany. So back in the days, in 1914, 1913 or so, if you wanted to buy a dollar and convert your currency from Germany marks to a dollar, you needed four marks. Again, this is 1914. So hey, here's four marks. Here's one dollar. You with me so far? Nine years later, in 1923, you know how much it took to just get one US dollar? How many marks? One trillion marks. Did, did you hear what I just said? It took one trillion marks to get one dollar. And it only happened in nine years. Now, why? Let me explain. After losing World War I, the Treaty of Versailles forced Germany $33 billion in reparations. So during this time, Germany lost a significant amount of territory where it was manufacturing goods. They were forced to print money to meet the reparation demands. This simultaneously added money to and removed goods from the economy. Catastrophic. By 1922, price had risen by nearly 700%, causing hyperinflation. The government had to print million mark notes, then billion mark notes and by the way you ever hear the saying a wheelbarrow full of money couldn't even buy a newspaper this is kind of where it comes from because this is when it went from four marks buying a dollar to a trillion marks buying one u.s dollar and by the way just to kind of show you some data here if you look at this chart here this shows you from 1918 where it you know, took roughly 100 marks to buy US dollar. Look how quickly it goes five years later to a trillion marks, right? That chart tells an entire story. You ever wonder why Jamie Dimon, CEO of Chase, has a $900 million art collection, or Steve Cohen, $1.1 billion art collection, or Microsoft has nearly a billion dollar collection. The company, 5,000 art pieces in 180 different locations worldwide. Why? Because billionaires and millionaires understand one of the ways to hedge against inflation, money being printed, market crash, interest rates is to buy non-duplicatable assets and one of them is art, fine arts. And that's why today's sponsor is Masterworks. Let me tell you a little bit about Masterworks. You may be watching the same Pat, I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire. I can't afford to buy Warhol or Banksy or Basquiat. How am I going to buy that? Well, Masterworks allows you to buy fractional shares. Like buying a share of Apple, you buy a share of a Banksy painting or a Warhol piece. You're able to do that through Masterworks. This is why over 800,000 people have signed up with Masterworks. Offerings have sold out within minutes, and many of you have already created accounts, and some of you that haven't. This is your chance to skip the waiting list and start your collection today. Just click on the link in the description, go to masterworks.art forward slash value And once again, masterworks.art forward slash value or click on a link below.
Next, we have Zimbabwe. In 2015, Zimbabwe's $100 trillion note was worth only 40 US cents. In the early 2000s, Zimbabwe government attempted a land redistribution effort which disrupted the farming industry, causing an agricultural production collapse. After monthly inflation peaked by one measure at 79.6 billion percent, the government in 2009 abolished their dollar and began using US dollar instead. The currency switch brought monetary stability for a few years until the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe could no longer meet the demand for US dollar. Money stored in the bank accounts could no longer be withdrawn in cash and in early 2019, the central bank reintroduced the Zimbabwe dollar, changing US dollar denominated savings and domestic government debts into a local currency of rapidly declining value. You wanna know what this is to the stock market? Take a look at this. This is Zimbabwe's stock market. Notice how everything is flat, smooth, everything's good. Maybe a slight pickup there and all of a sudden, boom! Boom, stock market skyrockets to 517,412. Now, that, that's the stock market, but what caused this? Take a look at the inflation rate. If we look at this chart here, upwards of 800%. And if you go to their interest rates, look what their interest rates went up to. 200%. Can you imagine buying a house on 200% interest rate? That's what happened to the Zimbabwe. Now, some people will say that'll never happen to the US. It's just never going to happen because those were not real interest rates. And now, you may be saying, Pat, I mean, I, I know how you're doing this with the inflation rate and the interest rate, but that's not the real interest rate. Well, if you want to look at the real interest, here's what you'd be looking at. Even if you look at this, look what the real interest rate was in 2022. Minus 30%. What do you do with minus 30%? Do they pay you? Like if 10% I'm paying, are you paying me now when it's minus 30%? Imagine how much of a shit show it was in Zimbabwe. Uh, and by the way, if you want to calculate that in US, the real interest rate would be if inflation is 5% and interest rates are three, the real interest rate is the difference between the five and the three, making it two. Here, it's 30% minus 30% in Zimbabwe. So that's Zimbabwe. Now let's take a look at Argentina. Here's Argentina for you. 70 years of welfare policies. A third of the workforce is employed by the state. Most spending goes towards salaries and pensions instead of investments, technology and infrastructure, fiscal deficit for the last 13 years, constant printing and borrowing, biggest IMF borrow, a third of IMF debt. As of 2023, there were price caps on over 1,300 consumer products. And what does this do when you take free market out? Take a look at their stock market, what it did from 2020. Look at that chart right there. It went from roughly 20,000 to what? Nearly 640,000. That's what you call a explosive reverse market crash. And what were their rates? Similar situation you're looking at here as Zimbabwe, not as bad, so I'm going to show you this again. If you look at this chart with Argentina's real interest rates, notice this, they're also in the negatives, right? And if you look at the bottom, the difference between interest rates and inflation, you typically want interest rates to be ahead of inflation. Notice what happens in 2022 when inflation, they bring the interest rates down, hoping to fix the economy. What happens to inflation gets ahead of it. And now they're chasing after inflation to not lose it. The reason why we're showing you this, because in America, if Powell all of a sudden gets pressure from the top to say lower interest rates, inflation could go back up again quickly. So managing this and how they could lose control over it, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Powell to not be tempted to want to please an administration and hold it together. Now we'll see what we're going to do. If he lets loose, you're talking about reverse market crash we'll experience in the U.S. Now let's take a look at Turkey. Okay, they got the number one military in the Middle East. If you look at Turkey, last October inflation hit a 24-year high with 85.5% on an annualized basis, meaning prices nearly doubled. Erdogan started cutting rates while the U.S. was hiking in 2022 against the advice of several Turkish central bankers that he ended up firing. And what happens to the Turkish stock market? What do you think? Take a look at this. Same thing. It goes from 1,000 roughly to 7,700. That's 700% increase in just a couple of years. And what were their real interest rates? What do you think? Take a look at this. Also in the negatives. And if you look at their inflation, guess what you're looking at on this next chart? Same exact issue. Notice a trend. It's a similar thing happening. America and Jerome Powell's got to keep it together or else we're going to have similar things happening here. Let's continue Iran. Here's Iran for you. Look at their stock market. Same exact thing. 2018, 2019, 2020, slightly of a growth. And then 2020 to 2021, boom, skyrockets to 2 million. And then eventually to 2.5 million, their stock market. And if you look at Iran's inflation rate, what do you notice? Take a look at this. It's not as high as some of these other guys, but 40%, 60% interest rates, upwards of 22%. And then here, real interest rates in Iran, guess where it's at? It fell down to negative as well, and they've been trying to control it ever since. Similar issues. And last case study here is Venezuela. Venezuela's high inflation levels are due to relying heavily on imports for basic goods, depending on oil as its main export, inefficient government industries, governmental corruption, price controls, government subsidies, and most of all, sanctions 
May 18, 2006, President Hugo Chavez from Venezuela declared on Tuesday that Venezuela would consider putting the sale of its oil in euros. In 2017, Trump aggressively tightening sanctions with the aim of ousting Maduro in favor of an interim opposition government led by Juan Guido. The Trump administration cut off by Maduro's regime's access to the U.S. financial system, barred U.S. companies and citizens from purchasing Venezuelan debt, and blocked PDVSA from exporting to the United States its primary destination. By the end of his term, Trump had issued seven executive orders targeting state or affiliated companies, government agencies, and the central bank. Venezuela's hyperinflation rate increased from 9,000 plus percent to 10 million percent from 2018 to 2019, according to the IMF. And by the way, if you take a look at this chart from Venezuela's inflation rate from 85 to 2024, look what happens after Trump did that to Venezuela in 2017. It skyrockets all the way up to what? 65,374% inflation. Look what happens to their stock market, the most bipolar stock market you can think about, where it goes from a couple thousand to 62,000 causing a reverse market crash. So take a look at this next chart of OPEC, crude oil, what happened in Venezuela. Their export kept going lower and lower and lower because that's what sanctions do. And again, with their interest rates skyrocketing all the way up to 50, 40, 60%. And they also had negative interest rates all the way down to 20%. Now, it, it, to, to give some hope to Venezuela, take a look at this year, 2014, 15, 16, 17, everything has declined just barely. They came back up in 21 and 22 because President Biden is willing to release the sanctions so they can start selling oil again if Maduro is willing to have free and fair elections. That means we have to trust he's going to do it. Whether he will or not, we won't know, but he said he will. Now, you may be saying, Pat, this is great, all these examples you're giving. We're not Zimbabwe. We're not Turkey. We're not Iran. We're not Venezuela. Are you out of your mind? That'll never happen to us in the U.S. Okay, let me show you a couple things here. Take a look. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But if you look at our inflation rate from 2000 till today, notice what happened in 2021, 22 skyrockets, right? Look at the rates on the next page. Our real interest rates, if you look at that, we went in the negative slightly, okay? Now, 2020 goes in the negative. 2013, we flirt with negative. And if you look at our effective rate uh, at this other chart, you'll also notice where we went there. We were also flirting with zero, zero, zero for God knows how long. And take a look at S&P 500. Look at this here, SPX. What do you notice? And roughly in 2009, SPX was at 700. Where is it at now? Roughly 4,300. It's 6X that quickly. You mean to tell me that can go 6X like this? That's what the chart is telling me. In America, for it to happen, what are the criteria? What do we notice here? Number one, in every one of these countries, we have quantitative easing, which is what? Printing money. We did a lot of that in U.S. Number two is when the government chooses to get involved with free market and they want to kind of create regulation and all these rules. We got a little bit of that going on. What's number three? Price controls. You got to put the price of oil at these. Some people want to flirt with it. Newsom wanted to flirt with it. Biden wanted to flirt with it. Those are the areas when you hear languages like that, we have problems coming up here. Now, why will it not happen in the States? That's a fair question. So again, the three is what? Quantitative easing, which is printing. You got getting involved in the free market and price controls. But outside of that, who's typically screwing this thing? Like, who's going to ruin this great idea called America? Politicians. By what? More welfare spending, more money printing. A couple things that may come up is if this idea of reparations becomes something that they want to do, and then you and I got to pay for it, and we've never been a part of it. I'm from Iran. My family to be involved with this, but we got to pay for it because this is what America wants to do, or UBI. There's just a lot of things going on. And by the way, the other threat is the following. U.S. dollar, we know it's strong. We, you know, we already talked about the 80% and the 60% currency worldwide using, but what if all of a sudden these guys that are having these meetings, right? The, the World Economic Forum, or all these other meetings that we're having, these summits that they're getting to Together. let's create a cbdc that the whole world uses everybody around the world uses the same exact you know central bank digital currency that we use no longer the u.s dollar you know what happens to us we lose a leverage that's not a good thing we want to keep and maintain that leverage as we have the money that allows us to keep us safe because people rely on the dollar trust me a big part of our economy staying strong is the reason why america is a pretty safe place to be at as well we give that up we give up leverage then you're helping the enemy and uh, other countries that we do not want to do that but if we stay put we monitor and hold our politicians accountable and presidents that want to keep printing money and we scream off the top of our lungs like slow it down we want accountability we want to see what kind of money you're spending on we want to be kind of pump your bricks on all this money we spend if we do that we have a shot at this reverse market crash not taking place in america specifically if powell doesn't all of a sudden start being tempted to lower the rates if you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you've not seen what they did to measure inflation in a whole different way than they did before, click here to watch that video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye.